Hey everyone, Fluff here. So today I'm going to bring you the Uzi guide, and as you saw in the clip at the start, she can hit like a truck now. Um, she's not necessarily winning any awards for the amount of damage she can do, but she's in a much better spot than she was previously. Um, stuff like Jungler and Uzi, uh, Jungler and uh, Shuri and Liner and stuff are still going to be faster in speedrunning, but this helps her skill builds a lot, and skill builds are now much more fun for her. Um, that being said, you will have to be very cautious of her fro uh, freeze up time as freeze is a very important linage pin in her kit now as she has a lot of uh, multipliers kitted towards doing damage to frozen targets uh, this is a problem when you get to planets like arctic gear where there's going to be obviously freeze immunity but on those planets where they're not already immune to freeze you need to be making sure to only really be nuking with all your cooldowns if you can freeze the target so that doesn't mean uh basically if the boss is in a moment where he's immune to cc don't waste your phoenix wings on him you need to get that big value of your freeze pulse out that tldr being said um moving over to the relics i've been running mercy strength module and crit defender so these are a very simple um, combo, and you've probably seen me mention these quite a lot in various other builds. But basically, Mercy gives you 100% attack power at 100% health. Uzi starts with 250 uh, attack power baseline, so this is going to give you an extra 250, um, making her start with 500. Uh, the Giant Strength, comboed with the Medic V2 that I've been running, will bring me up to 636. This is a lot of attack power to start your runs with, and helps your early damage a lot. Um, the damage on skill use is also helpful to conjoin with Critical Defender. And I know what you're now thinking, you're running Mercy and something that hurts you. This is counterproductive now, but as you can see I have a shield, if you go over to your season upgrades, as long as you can get the gain shield, you can stack your Crit Defender whilst having the shield active and not really worry about hurting yourself. Um, she also has immunity upgrades which will stop you taking damage from the self damage part as well later into your runs. And yeah, it's 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 very easy to manage. Special charge module, as her main nuking ability is going to be a multi pelleted ability, so this will be resetting quite often. Once every 15 seconds, obviously, but it's pretty much guaranteed once every 15 seconds. And then crit defender, so you can get your crit up early as possible in the run to really guarantee doubling your damage as soon as you can. Um, other relics to consider. Now, with this setup, you've noticed that there's no skill power in our starting lineup, so technically you can run this as weapon if you wish. I haven't got this set up yet. I've been messing with in-game stuff, not so much my priority list, but um, in a sense, you would run a run just skill-related stuff, so you would remove all these weapon power stuff, and you would throw in Convergent Energy Skill Module, you would throw in Power Box, you would want to throw in Extreme um, Power Chip, uh, you would want to put some cooldown stuff up here as well. So, for example, um, since Phoenix Wings has a relatively high cooldown and so does Umbrella, although you will be resetting it with a special charge module, you want to be having it as up as often as possible, so you would want it to get stuff like reactive charge, as well as enhancement type. This will help a lot as the ticks from your bubble can proc reactive charge module so your bubble is going to be down for longer than three seconds so one bubble use will potentially proc this twice for you giving you your react um, phoenix wings back much much sooner uh other things to consider is you're going to need a shock reactor or to run the indra's weapon if you find it in your run so you can apply shock manually as uzi doesn't have a way of defense shredding defense is going to be a big factor in losing damage shock gives you a 50 percent armor shred uh, status effect target, since we're going to be wanting to do our big damage inside our statuses anyway. Status effect target is just a no-brainer. Uzi has an upgrade that lets her uh, get 200% defense on Phoenix Wings, so defense suit retaliation becomes a very attractive option within the run, as well as crit damage related stuff and our general uh, multipliers that help us based on distance. And then just other reactors, so Bleed Reactor is a really good one. This does a big chunky nuke when you stack it to five times. Um, this is relatively easy as Uzi because assault handguns as well as Phoenix Wings. And then other things to consider is finding things like Critical Greaves, Critical Chip, and um, that's pretty much it there. You don't want to dodge Greaves as you're going to be deactivating this with things like Giant Snag. Moving over to skills. So I've been opting to run double projectiles. This is in the same vein as lightning. So you have double projectiles or you can run melee range damage. 
I prefer to run double projectiles as this gives you more chances to reset special charge module as well as just guarantees double damage on your uh, Phoenix wings once you get all the pellets through the target. Whereas this requires you to be in melee range and on some bosses where the hitboxes are smaller, you'll overshoot a little bit and lose some of that damage. Bosses like the Lava Queen, the Volcanist Queen, sorry, and the little blue lizard Dementria or whatever that little shit's called. But aside from that, you'd want to find these two as soon as possible. Then you'd want to find the Frozen Target. Although Arctic Gear is going to be immune, Protean is always the boss that you want to be preparing all your runs for. So if you can handle Protean relatively fast, you'll handle other planets relatively fast, basically. So we want to be getting Frozen Target as soon as possible, as well as the cooldown, so we could do it as often as possible. And then the immunity to pair with our retaliations in our runs. Uh, Next to that, our next hardest hitting ability is actually going to be our uh, survival skill. It's a bit weird, but when Uzi dashes, you will notice she does kind of a lightning pulse before the decoy explodes. That's the thing that, exp uh, that does the damage, is the initial blink that she does, not the decoy exploding. Decoy does a little bit of damage, but this lightning pulse shockwave that she does before where she's actually initially launching from is the thing that does the big 500% nuke. Uh, and, and that can hit like a truck. Um, as next to that is you would also want to find the extra dash teleport, so that way you can have this happen twice, which allows you to do things like bam, and then instantly teleport back again and pretty much double proc it. Um, the way that would look in a run is, say the boss is on the other side of this, you would position yourself so you'll land on the opposite side of him, like here, and then you'll dash over him and do damage that way. Um, next to that, you'll want to find your other modifiers, so you'll want to find your freeze, freeze lasting longer. Like I said, your big damage is going to come from when the bosses are in a freeze and the status effects, so we want to make our freeze last as long as possible, and this also gives us 100% damage against frozen targets now. This is huge. The, light, uh, the Uzi buffs that happened are only ever good for her. It's just we would like a little bit more. <laughs> um, cooldown isn't necessarily a, an important factor. As you can see, Uzi's cooldown on Frozen Pulse is 6 seconds. Freeze baseline lasts 10 seconds with all the modifiers and stuff that we can get. So this isn't that important to worry about. <laughs> you don't want to be spamming it. You want to have more control over when you use it. Um, uh, the skill power on enemies hit. It's pretty useful. You're going to get this stacked to 5 quite easily through the course of a fight, as well as if you have any alert procs where the bots spawn in, you'll be able to proc these stacks off of them as well and just generally get around 100% extra skill power through the course of a longer boss fight like Arctic Gear or Protean. 50% um, attack power on Bubble is pretty huge. This is actually kind of important to find if you manage to get this in conjunction with the AOE size increase. Although it gives weapon power, we care more because of the fact that if we make the bubble bigger, we'll be able to Phoenix Wings from one side of it to the other and not lose that 50% attack power on the path. Whereas if we did this and had the boss in the middle and then we Phoenix Wings from here, we would be just outside of it and it's really hard to stay in the middle. Um, if you had a cannon weapon on, this is a bug, it's been like this since the dawn of time, but you can actually steer your phoenix wings with a cannon weapon by using your right stick or your mouse very close to your uh, body. Um, those are the only really important skill related upgrades. Pretty much everything I just said, you can flip side that and now start, if you did weapon power instead, ignore like this skill power increase for example and just prioritize the stuff that says weapon power increase and the 100% um, freeze target increases. Moving over to toy workers, vice versa, it's usual stuff. If you're doing a skill build, you'll want to get ignore defense, you want to get skill power, you want to get your cooldown stuff, you want to get your attack power stuff, you want to get your crit stuff. Those are all good stuff to find on a toy worker. Um, I prefer Medic V2, just for one, the heal to help maintain mercy, and two, the extra attack power rings, but High V2 is a perfectly good option as well for the extra attack power as it was percent based, so it will give us more as um, Uzi in comparison to other characters. Uh, Goldhound is a terrific option and still probably the best toy worker in the game. Again, cooldown, skill power, the extra resources. If you were doing weapon related, you would want to go for something like this where you just get a bunch of weapon power, ignore defense. 
and vice versa. I hope this has been helpful. Um, like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 all that YouTube jazz. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.